Welcome back to HTC Korea, everybody. <laughs> Dragonshire is going to be our starting map. I spoiled it as I'm a little bit hyped going into L5 versus Good Game. L5, again, the big favorites here. They've won every series they've played so far. They've only dropped one map. So even to predict that they would drop a map to Good Game here would be pretty crazy. But Good Game looks to be pretty all right right now. You know, like Good, especially on his Zeratil, has shown us some pretty flashy plays. That is true. And I think that will be the goal going into this match of GG. They need to take at least a map even more. And even if they can actually win this series. That will be the goal, of course. Winning the series will be the goal, but likely, realistically, taking off a map of uh, of 5 will be the realistic goal for GG right now. Well, I mean, it's tough to even call that realistic at this point. I mean, it, it's... I think it's possible. It's possible. GG has been slowly climbing up with their teamwork and draft. I think it might work. They look very improved, mm -hmm. and What's important to note, of course, in a round-robin format like this is wins are more important than map score, but when you ever get to a tie situation, map score is super important, which is why uh, going into this series, any team, in fact, that for the rest of this, that takes a game off of L5 will be the only ones to do so next to MVP Miracle. So if no one gets points on L5 and you get one, you get this extra little map point um, that's mm -hmm. pretty nice. So even if you can't win the series, winning every single map you can absolutely counts. So they're looking for that win today. They want to win the series. It would be a huge upset. I mean, the hugest. So uh, realistically here, let's see what they've got. I'm sure they've prepared really well for this matchup. Yep, they had some time to prepare. Of course, they did not play yesterday. So they had a day plus to prepare against L5. L5 played yesterday against MVP Miracle and... The Invincible, the perfect team, it looked like they have dropped their first map of the season against MVP Miracle. And GG, I'm pretty sure they saw that match, or at least the VOD or live. Maybe they can have tried to do the same tactic and try to work their ways out just like MVP Miracle. And we saw that L5 was not a perfect team. They're not perfect, but in terms of international competition, and even in Korea in most recent times, they are as close as it gets. Yep. And you can see jung listed as key today, losing the one on Ragnaros to Miracle yesterday. But in general, absolutely flawless. This team, so good at team fighting rotations. It, the cool thing about this team is they have a lot of strengths. They have, uh, you know, strong peel. They've got good back lines. But in a game like Heroes where you're tied to your team's EXP and you're you're a five man and this is such a team fight game with objectives, they just don't have weaknesses. And that's why this team, their opponents, good game, are gonna have a hard time playing against a team that feels pure, feels without flaw. Yep, and the challenger, GG, comes along here. Hooligan, good, BDG, UJ on Jaehyun. Jaehyun on the first day, especially his favorite hero, Malfurion, is in the meta now. He's been, he has been showing way too passive defensive back line. And he has also improved that he also has to be aggressive at the time when he has to go into that Twilight Dream especially. Here's Hooligan playing a large amount of tanks here. Most notably, the lack of ETC in his lineup. Losing mostly on the Muradin. Here. He's only played one ETC in his last five, so a player that is really focused on the Varian, but not so fo focused on his yeah, face. But out of focus. <laughs> uh, yeah, speaking of focus. Yeah, and key player, I, as you talked about, will be good on 0-2. And also BDG has pretty good leaming also. There are some snipe fans that L5 can actually do. Because GG does not have as big as a hero pool compared to L5 does. I feel like Good Game is is a team that could be a really top contender going into our next phase of HGC in this first round robin. Obviously, they've dropped down quite low already. But you can really feel, as I already mentioned, Dragonshire will be the first pick. It's uh, GG goes, gets first pick and Dragonshire will be the first map chosen by L5. But you can really feel the start of something great. It almost reminds me of Tempest in the old days, uh, you know, when they started off weak, along with uh, DSA going into season two, the summer season of OGN last year, and then suddenly they really pulled it off at the end. I feel like we could have a similar situation here with Good Game. 
another thing that reminds me, of course, the synergy that Hong Kono and Dami had together mm -hmm. uh, on Tank and Bruiser is really reminiscent, or this is what's reminiscent of that is what we have with Good and Hooligan, the pairings of their heroics, how well they fight together, how well they get picks together, the CC that Hooligan gives to Good, who then gets those kills. Um, that pairing has been very strong for them so far, and I feel like that's what GD's greatest strength is, is these two working together. Yep, as we go into Dragonshire as L5 heavily, heavily favored macro global heroes before in week one, and we have slowly transitioned into week two where we don't highly pick, we still do highly pick global heroes, but not as much, but also go into the team fight, the lane pressure. I think that's the key. We're trying to go into, the meta is shifting a little bit towards that. That it is. Looks like we're having some uh, technical vehicle of eSports bumpy ride here getting into this game as we're not quite into that lobby yet, but I'm sure it'll be started. There it is. All I had to do was complain about it. Just like when I'm complaining about my queue times, I'm like, oh, where's my game? And then boom, it always My queue times are super straight. I couldn't even go to the restroom. No, that happened queue. to me today too, like twice. So I was like, oh, I just gotta hold it. Uh, okay, everyone's in now. First band to GG. See you later, Zarya. And L5 will... Falstead will be the... Case yeah. of the go-to, of course. With how L5 plays as well, they're just not gonna allow any sort of macro advantage to good game. And from here, if they want to go towards that global draft, they can choose to pick up the Haka or ETC. Feels, feels a bit early to get the Haka. I think we're going to see a Malfurion rotation here. I mean, eventually, yes, the Haka will come into play, but mm -hmm. for this one, I think we're looking at Malfurion and Varian. Uh, and potentially that Zeratul pick because they can take it earlier. It's going to be Malfurion over the Varian. And L5, will they deny the Zeratul? It's been a popular pick today. And a CSC on that Zeratul can make some flashy, crazy plays. And they're going to go ahead with Dragon Rouse and Varian. This looks very similar to the draft from match number one. Tychus going to be the first damage picked up here. There's the Dahaka you mentioned. Coming into the second rotation, so controlling the global aspect so far. And with Varian and Ragnaros, it's very unlikely we'll see ETC for L5. So it seems that in terms of global rotations, GG has kind of won that aspect with this first pick. L5 now looking to ban a main tank, potentially. They might even be looking at the ETC here. Or they may actually go around a little bit and ban out a Muradin or a Li Ming. That's also a possibility. Those are the two big uh, potential other ones. They do stick with the least common denominator here in the ETC ban. With already having the two melees. We've seen L5 run solo tank Varian many times in this tournament, pairing him mostly with Ragnaros on that second rotation. They normally have the second rotation, because only one time in this tournament they uh, lost a game and then were able to take first pick, so they're very familiar with drafting in second rotation. <laughs> G -class. They have to be. They are <laughs> used to it, and... They've been picking up Ragnaros and Varian most of the time after losing, especially like a false stat or a global hero against the other team. Yeah, and they take false stat almost every other time anyways if it's not removed. Bala going to be taken away here. So in terms of damage, false stat, Bala, Tychus all removed, but they just are that ready to lock right into Sergeant Hammer Li Ming. Uh, no questions asked very quickly. Yep, that's Sergeant Hammer. It is. Is it Sergeant? The reason why Sergeant Hammer has been climbing up so highly, not so highly, but consistently, is because Falstead is gone, Vala is gone, Tychus is taken. So there's not much of a choice other than, let's say, Rainer. Maybe that's another option. But in terms of siege and pushing power, Hammer, Hammer is the answer. Gul'dan is a is basically the answer to the answer uh, to what you're saying is he's going to have great wave clear with Tychus. So in terms of wave clear with these two pickups, it seems like good game kind of wins in terms of wave clear. But if they end up getting any picks against them, the pressure that Sergeant Hammer can put on is real. And L5 is going to go ahead and take Rhaegar here over the Karazim. So a lack of mobility in terms of jumping to he get heals, but a bigger healing pool with Ancestral. So I actually like 
to be honest, the draft of good game better. I like the Gul'dan for the map. I like the mo the mobility that Dahaka is going to give them. They've got a strong front line with Dahaka and Murden. I'm on their side in terms of drafting for this one. Yep, and as we get into game number one, let's see if L5 or GG can actually take off a map against L5. As you mentioned, draft does look better towards GG. Towards, towards GG. We're going to get into Dragonshire game number one. See you guys in Dragonshire. In blue, L5. Back to back world champions. SC on his hammer. Nitrogen on Li Ming. Jung on Ragnaros. Noblesse on Varian. And Swoy on Rhaegar. Only the mouth for him in this tournament so far, but gets the Rhaegar this time. GG. BDG on Taikas. Jaehyun on Malfurion. Good on the Haka. Hooligan on Murden. And UJ on Gudan. So. We're going to see the level 1 Dahaka attempt. This is really greedy. Almost never works. That's grab Li Ming, though. Yeah, Nitrogen gets caught, but we'll teleport away. It's obviously still a better trade. It's going to force Nitrogen to do an early well top. GG does have, as you said, tankier front line, and Dahaka having that global presence will be in effect. Then you said, you, as you <laughs> always say, can squat in that. He's in a that squatter. Shrine. Look, get, get that guy a job. Get him out of there. <laughs> and very good rotation coming out from GG. SCSC is stuck. There is no way to escape that. Very well done. Two uh, early advantages here for GG. Getting that well uh, wasted for Nacho Gen. Getting the pick in bot lane. They have a really strong draft. and They're going to rotate and control these lanes. With the ETC ban, we saw earlier, they don't have that to assist them. But they have the stronger rotations. They have a global as well, which is going to help them in terms of the top lane here. Good should be able to just uh, dark swarm his way out there, but this is the problem. As there's not enough pressure for L5 to counteract this, they can send a rotation down of Nacho Jin from mid, but he just flings a few skill shots and GG's like, and so what? As long as they keep uh, Hooligan in this bush, Leeming can't really rotate down. Look at how fast they clear this. And with a few more of these, these turrets are going to be out of ammunition. They already channel the Dragonite. They shouldn't be able to get this, but they're just doing so much damage, and that pot bot lane is such a problem for L5 right now. Yep, even pressing on this Nacho Jin right now. Stonebolt does hit on Nacho Jin. Not really much of a follow-up damage, but in that time, Ragnaros does cancel that channel. Now L5 has the chance to. Just for a second here, uh, especially with SC putting all those mines down uh, in the bot lane. It's got six in total there. It's going to be tough to get into that. So they buy some time with this, uh, with that rotation bit to try to get the kill on Matrogen. SC with a nice knockback here. Again, this push is really strong, and the tower is getting pretty low here. BDG eats some damage, but this lane is in such advantage for GG, and in top lane, it's pretty neutral. And good came all the way down right now. Felt like a miss the communication was off for a second. That was the best time to com come in. Was yeah. about to say that good was looking for a chance to actually come in. This is a very good route onto Noble Less, but gets healed enough damage. Soy here needs to get out. Gets body blocked there. Nice dwarf toss. There was a big uh, root attempt here on to LSE. He actually might go down. Yeah, he does. The, the DOT out damages the healing well with that. Uh, with Gul'dan here, so he gets the kill. I was talking about the top was going to be neutral with Good's rotation down. Uh, I mean, it was it was never really neutral, right? Jung Ah was kind of winning the lane. That's how this matchup goes every time. We've seen it probably like 50 times by now in this tournament. He came all the way down and then he didn't didn't do anything, and it was the other four that actually made yeah. the play. So he got so he got uh, he lost his wall. So it's a wall for a wall. But the bot lane is more important, and uh, you know, this is a small lead for a good game as a result. We'll see if they can keep it up. Nice dodge here on the Stormbolt. Noblesse can eat a lot of damage regardless. Remember, very not very tanky. Pre-10. And top lane, we see Jung Ah wanted to go up there, perhaps squat for a channel. Or excuse me, a good. Jung Ah will deny that. And we actually see a rotation up right now from Noblesse. It looks like he's not going to be able to find anything as 
really passive play from Good in the top lane. If you look at the mini map there, you can see it. For the moment, I love how GG is rotating up and down and keep the pressuring on the lane as they do have the wave pressure. And they're actually going to commit to this. Sergeant Hammer very low, but does get out. But yeah. they ended up in just stealing the camp. They steal the camp, deny some EXP. Jungle, though, at the same time, is going to deny EXP up here. He's going to get a lot of damage on this split push. is quite powerful. And uh, SC has been really on point with his knockbacks. Uh, good committed to the brush talk there. And this is a nice bait here. Nobles in position. Will they be able to save Jungle, though? Not enough. Not alone. Nachogen comes up to try to make this a trade, and it looks like he just barely will. And look and at that Nachogen not even missing a single damage on that skill shot. Getting a reset right after. And while that's happening, good press on the G. I mean, I'm quite impressed how GG has been playing so far. Yeah, they're, they're pretty ahead, to be honest with you. They G4. are ahead, and they're pressuring all the lane with their wave clear, even when there is a Sergeant Hammer on the other side, using that Gul'dan's power, exactly like how Tempest did on match number one. Yeah. Gul'dan feels like he might slowly become one of the most powerful heroes on small to mid-sized maps, especially on maps where pushing uh, is so important, like this one, the tri-lane maps, or the rotational maps, like the Spider Queen. Seems like he's really rising up in terms of power here. Uh, they have Global, they have Tychus as well. I mean, the wave clear is insane. And it's going to be that same Felguldon, which gives you a lot of poke. So when you get this edge in the lane, you can just kind of safely poke the fort until it eventually goes down. You've got that heal, you just kind of... You keep, keep constantly getting healed by Malph in this case, and then just uh, steal your health for more mana. And we still do not have a Dragon Knight, but GG just hit level 10, and instead they're gonna go towards all their pressure onto the bottom lane. And good, is he? I think he's gonna be very close to being dead at the end. He has his heroic, he heals up a little bit there, he survives, which makes this a insanely good trade for GG, is they're gonna just continue to pressure with their heroic advantage. They get the entire keep ball down. These giants, though, they're still here, but they're at full health. Right after say they get hit by uh, an orb, so not, not completely there, but uh, they do go down. But they've got an entire keep ball down. L5 unable to find anything. I believe they got that top fort, but a fort for a keep wall is definitely a good trade for a good game. L5, after hitting that heroic, they do have the chance. Noble X gets a significant amount of damage at the front line. It gets Ancestral healed. Ooh, big horrify here. Not on the target they were looking for in Noblesse. We see a big stun go down. Or excuse me, a big silence go down. Uh, and that will be the end of SC. So a win there in this fight as Ancestral was already used beforehand. And it's not going to be, sorry for the, the fans out there, the Duck Duck BFG earlier. It's not going to be BFG here. It's going to be the Napalm Strike this time. Which is a lot more common and basically it's just chosen close to 98%. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's basically the only one that most people consider to be viable. Duck Duck just showed us that uh, everything we know might not always be true. Showed us another viewpoint of the world. But this is going to be a Dahaka uh, shrine here at the top, I believe. Oh, he's just barely not going to get it, which is unfortunate. That's why this ping's going down. This if he gets this, he could squat it, and then we could see a channel. Jung is actually taking a lot of damage here. This is not a good situation for L5. They need to actually leave here. And Gul'dan's channeling this at the time. He does get the Dragon Knight at 7. Nobles also taking some damage as Hooligan just popped that avatar just for the safety. Yeah, but they're just so uh, outclassed here by the damage. They have to retreat. Wuje, the longer they stay trying to get picks there, which was already a lost Dragon Knight, the more damage this Dragon Knight gets for free in the mid lane. And Wuje has got this down to about 20% health. He's gonna just go straight in and kill it. It looks like does get rooted here, so looks like babe, maybe just barely not. One or two more hits will do the job. Two yeah. more. Yeah, Soak on top does get does give them level 13, a talent ahead. Hooligan taking some damage in the front. Even Molto Core going down, smashed right onto Moradin, gone. And that gets them a kill onto Hooligans. So that's really nice for them, definitely a uh, nice consolation prize for losing that fort with the failed rotation. They didn't get the kill top. They did eventually get this with Molten Core. So well used there. And now L5 should be able to steal this camp away. As I was saying uh, the other day, I mean, if you give L5 an inch, they take a mile. And with just one kill, even a talent tier down, they are going to invade here. Big silence is cleansed actually on Notch Jump, but he's not able to do more damage. There's a huge horrify too, and Junga, you're out of here, man. Knocked out of the park with that one. And good game looks 
real good <laughs> tonight, G Clef. This is a great showing from them starting off on game number one. Totally dominating and controlling this map with the wave clear they have, the CC, the silences are real. And now we're just going to see Good go back up to the top lane, keep pressuring that. And they're pushing for 16. Yes, Hoyos was a little bit out of position, a little bit too far away for that and stress throw to go. And then great body blocks to come out coming out from GG to make sure that Varian couldn't really go anywhere away from that camp. Not to mention the Twilight Dream as well. Now, four Siege Giants with Felpoke. This is a CG, as CG as it gets of a composition here, which is so strong, went ahead. No bless is caught. Hooligan, the body block is real. Nice ancestral this time. Look at how much damage Wu Jay is doing. He's just sitting there doing it by himself. Get back. They save the keep, but this is a great exchange for a good game. Continuing to poke this down. One or two more times of even with no kills, sieging up on that keep, and it's a goner. And as we've seen tonight, the trend has been early game keeps win games. The pressure that they provide the longer the game goes on cannot be overstated. It would it all starts from that wave clear, especially with Gudan right now. That's also something that's changing in the minute and they're gonna catch try to get at a pick on Swoy. It looks like they're going to. There is no way of getting out of this one. Sad Swoy. There you have it. They're just getting dominated right now. Ten kills to two. And suddenly Nerds and Heroes fans everywhere are getting a little bit freaked out. L5 fans are like, oh, I thought this was just, I was going to skip this one and get a, get some dinner and come back and watch the third matchup. And the people are getting a little bit excited probably with this one. Yeah. There's the keep. I feel like we've learned a lot about how strong Gul'dan is tonight specifically. Yes, we've seen him a lot in this tournament already, but tonight's the night where he's really shining. And Wu Jay is a specialist player by trade and it is old times on Hero. As you do see the Dragonite channel as a result, the top fort goes down, but... Again, the keep more important. With Wu Jay's ability to know how lane pressure works, that's his old role. He's playing, I mean, obviously, he's a mage here, he's doing a lot of damage, but in terms of lane pressure and pushing, he's very good at that. He's very familiar with that. So the hero suits his playstyle well. I mean, as well as he's played the specialist role since 2015. So it's no shocker here that he's doing quite well on the hero. And with that Dragon Knight, good is going to push out. Regar, so they can't heal. No less soaking, soaking some damage in the front line as Ragnaros has to clear the wave on top. That camp is actually pushing pretty far on that top lane. They do have to go clean that up. As long as it doesn't get the keep, it's probably okay. Uh, it's going to give them a lot of EXP, and that's the big one. Um, but, you know, because the turrets are out of ammo, GG doesn't even lose that much EXP. The top lane is never the game ending lane. It can do some pressure when you have catapults there. It can make the force defense a lot scarier. But, the, but with, if it's still a keep, you're never worried like, ah, oh, they're gonna go steal our keep later. L L5 doesn't have globals. Getting that keep is probably never even gonna happen in this game. And if it does, it's gonna give them some EXP, but it's not gonna be that big of a threat. I like Good Game's commitment to pressure the mid keep and get that wall down. A trade, even while they have a Dragonite, for a keep wall for a keep wall is good if it's the mid keep. Mm -hmm. Agreed on that, and GG. Oh my God, that's all <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I, I was going to cover some of it, but you ended up just covering all of it, so I don't. Really, I lost my words. I couldn't really that's say right. anything more. You summed it pretty well up there, and then good. He has been just soaking EXP on top, not really going too aggressive, not overextending that he can actually get ganked. He's, he backs up at the right time because he knows something is up. He smells it. Maybe some of, some of his teammates actually pinged so hard that he had to go back. And the other four, especially this tri this this trio here, Malfurion, Gul'dan, and Tychus, they've been around together since the game started at this bottom lane and all together they've been pushing, they've been taking camps, it's so fast. It's this tri-lane with Hooligan as the human ward, as you like to call him, and I think that's it's just basically what he is. The, the tank player that's the human ward stops rotations from punishing moves like this. If Hooligan sees or smells, again, going back to your, uh, your sense uh, talk here, if he senses, if he smells that coming over, sees it, then they stop. They don't try to take the, the neutral bruiser. But he's there, so it's not risky. It's safe. They already have that lane pressure from the catapults that are starting to stack up. And they get that. I'm gonna trade a fort for a fort here. This is actually, I think, pretty good for L5 because we're gonna get some of the comeback EXP here to help them catch up to 20. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I mentioned before, the bot structures are always more important than the top ones in terms of ending the game. So 
L5 is also going to be able to, because of the, the proximity of this keep wall, threatening keep wall. If they get collapsed on here and they get wiped, it won't be worth it. So I'm a little bit concerned for them staying here this long. Let's see if this works out. BDG went home. So it's going to take a little bit longer as Leeming looks like Leeming does end up getting that bot shrine. All right, I see the target here. Will Wuje commit to a Horrify? Thought about it, but not able to get quite into position. L5 getting out just in the nick of time. They can actually, GG can actually stall a little bit more time and just consistently, consistently just poke a little bit by little when Dehaka decides actually to push the mid lane instead of the top lane and join the fight when they hit 20. That will be the critical timing. But during all this, Good is pushing. He's getting the mid keep wall down. And if he brush stalks in any moment, L5 will find themselves trapped. I'm really worried about how aggressively L5 is pushing into this. Noblesse is going to tank some of this uh, fort shot, this keep shot. Going to get stunned. Ancestral used super early. There's a Horrify. Really well-timed Ancestral. Jung is actually going to Molten Core here as Good continues to soak for 20. He doesn't get the keep, but he gets the keep wall. And he's pushing the top lane. Once he gets 20, he's going to come in. They're going to go for an engage. This keep shouldn't realistically go down. But L5 is trying to make this happen, and they've yep. already got half the health down on it. And GG is really looking for that level 20 as Dehaka is soaking up all the EXP as possible. They're about to hit 20 very soon, within within 20 seconds or so. And L5 noticing that they're backing off now without that Molten Core. Is it too late? 20 going to get reached with this minion wave. Hooligan wants to engage before it. L5 turns for a moment. 20's up. Well, we see Dehaka brush stuck in. Here he comes. Okay, does not actually try to come for a flank. Just leaves the top lane, and now with 20, they're gonna group for five, not to try to get a pick to try to stop L5 from rotating. They've missed the boat on that one, but well, they're gonna try to group to get a Dragon Knight. They've already gotten both shrines, and there's no way L5 could deny as Jungle doesn't have a Molten Core. He just used it for the Siege. And this is gonna go straight towards the, well, I was gonna say the mid-keep, it looks like they're considering core with this. This Dragon Knight looks Scary to me. It looks like this can actually be a game changer. But L5, notice, no, knowing that the skills are gone with that Dragon Knight, they might actually go all the way in, as it is kind of 4v5 with that Dragon Knight on good. They have so much siege power. They have so much siege power. Gul'dan has his uh, teleport as well, so he has a little bit of an extra escape, so he's going to be able to pressure a little bit harder here. This Dragon Knight, though, used in this fashion, ends up being totally wasted. A big win here for L5 as they buy more and more time towards 20. And good game will rotate away. They can't steal this camp, it's not up for two more minutes. They could go back and take their own camp or they could evade bruisers. Either way, I feel they should avoid the mistake that L5 cost them a game on yesterday versus Miracle. Mm -hmm. They should force something with their 20. If they just let L5 sit back and take the 20, it could cost them the game. They, help, they still have that keep advantage, but I feel like take your advantage and push it harder here. Steal the bruisers. Force a team fight on your terms, on your storm talents. Yep, that's exactly what they need to do. At L5 is still a little bit away, and Nobles gets caught in there with that storm bolt. Not going to get too much damage yet, as the Haka joins the fight, and Gudan is still clearing the waves from behind. Looks like good game is just trying to stall out here. Well, they're tr hoping that the pressure in the bottom lane will eventually force L5 down, but it's pretty pushed, so that's not going to happen. Finally, they do eventually force their way into this Bruiser camp. L5 is not going to take the bait, though. They know they can clear this Bruiser camp. It's not their their biggest problem right now. They just want to make sure they don't lose this mid keep, and they're halfway to 20 now, but it's still a long road. It is a long road, and Uja can be a little bit more aggressive as he has that demonic circle at the bottom lane. Looks like he had changed the positioning of the demonic circle just now. Yeah, just now. It was it was down there. So giving us some extra potential here. 21 reached for GG. Gonna yeah. give them a small scaling advantage, but they still can't put a dent in this keep, even with all the siege they have. Yeah, they don't have the most poke as Gudan's range is not the longest one compared to Li Ming. And not they're about to hit 20 soon. So GG just safely goes back, try to go for the DK as they have the global Global available for, with Dehaka. They're gonna go come go come around. Dehaka actually flies in. Let's see. Nobles does get caught for the moment, but they have heal. And you use that stun to try to help out. There's the ancestral, as you just said. The horrify here is pretty solid and good. In position to do a lot of peel right now. Moving forward, silence goes down here. Looks to be a dead Ragnaros. Jungha already down. Hooligan didn't even avatar. He's gonna come in here. 
I believe he has hardened shield still available. He is going in. There's the kill onto Varian. Noblesse down now, and it is a kill, one for one in terms of Noblesse, but Good still has the advantage in numbers here. Level 20 is reached for L5. They're going to try to get the kill onto BDG. Ice block used for Jaehyun. They should be able to get out. Here comes Ujay. He had to use that demonic circle earlier, so finally rejoins the fight. It is 4v3, but having the potential of Nacho Jin getting that reset, that's what they need. Nacho Jin is very low on mana. That's one of the things, but Hooligan is soaking up some damage. Gul'dan is gone. It is 3v2 now. It was 4v3 at the beginning. L5 with just the better coordination here in this fight. Mechanically, they ended up winning it there. The forced GG to get disjointed. Using Demonic Circle to escape meant that Wujay wasn't there for a long time, so L5 kind of healed up and then had the better health pools for that engage. With only three here, they could try to force this core as everyone respawns, but it's it's going to be tough. Like, I'm not entirely sure if they can really finish this here. Dahaka alone isn't going to be a lot. Yeah, I don't think they can finish it. They're just trying to put some scratch into it. You know, they may be able to, once everyone rejoins, they get the Molten Core on the, the dead keep. Yeah, Molten Core did get canceled during that team fight, so maybe this is the time, and good, doing a great job by just getting that SC out of that position. Just going to use his adaptation here. I think this should still be a win with Jonga now here for L5. Good trying to do what he can. Here's the Molten Core we were talking about. Nacho Gen's out of mana. BDG's back. Uh, the Haka is dead. Storm Shield goes off. The drill here on the Junga, but it's just taking way too long. Here's the Ancestral, and L5 is going to force the win here. A very tough game. Their hardest win this season by quite a large margin, I'd say. Yep, L5 struggled so hard until they hit le level 20. Was there ever a game that it made it so hard? GG. Really pressing hard with that Gul'dan, Tiger's Mouth, Fury, and tri Triple Combo. L5 was just so patient on 19. They were so patient. And good game. Had this massive lead. They had this early keep. They could never force the second.